Hello everyone, this is Dr. Alexander Alsadi again, and uh, if you just watched our previous video, I talked about how we were going to transition going to the island all the way up until your MD4 semester. Um, in this video, I'm going to talk about when you leave the island and you're transitioning um, to your review program up to when you take your USMLE Step 1 exam. When you leave MD4, I know, I mean, I felt happy. I know a lot of students felt very accomplished, and you should because it is a good accomplishment to have. However, uh, you are just beginning in your stages of studying, right? Because it is a very long progressive process uh, coming off the island uh, into the United States. So the first thing I would do, as soon as you can, try to get your living situation in order. At CMU, we have uh, three top places to do rotations, Houston, uh, Chicago is the main one, and then also in Atlanta, right? So I would pick one of those. I did do Chicago because there, at least when I was there, is a lot more opportunities. Um, but do wherever you feel the most comfortable with. Um, so try to get your living situation in order. The next thing you need to do, I recommend doing the review program first. From that, they're going to inform you everything that you need to know. You're gonna have it all in front of you very organized. And then from there, after the, the review program, now you can go into your dedicated study time because now you know what you have to know to do well on the exam. So during your review program, why is it better to do it before you do dedicated study time? And the answer is pretty simple, and it's because these doctors and professors and teachers have been doing this for years. It's the first thing they tell you, oh, I've been doing this for 20 some years at so-and-so medical school, right? They're very well-known professors at their medical schools in the US and they know exactly what's going to be tested on the step one. They know the types of questions. They have students that, you know, inform them about different topics maybe that are presented and they're always on top of everything that they're doing to give you the best for your exam for that year. So that is why I highly advise you take a review program first before you do dedicated study time. Then your next question, okay, I'm doing a review program. Should I do a seven week or 14 week? And I'm telling you, I don't know if it looks tempting for that seven, but go for the 14, okay? It's three months long and you go for about five hours a day, which is plenty, because after those five hours, you gotta go home and study another six hours, right? So if you do the seven week, you're going nine hours a day. There's no way you're gonna be, you know, have any kind of energy or stamina to be studying all night after that. It's too much information to be given you. Just think about all the information that you learned over the past two years. Your review program is gonna give it to you in three months. Right? So imagine how much that is in a month and a half. It's way too much information. So I highly recommend you taking the 14 week review course and just kind of gradually getting the information presented to you in a, in a very unique way that they do it um, to give you the best shot at understanding all the concepts for step one. What do I do during the review program? And I'm gonna tell you what I did I'm going to tell you what many of the professors that I talk to recommend, and that's what I recommend now to students that I help out. So from the beginning, right, they give you the book, right? You have all the books, you know exactly what the order is going to be in. So during the class, yeah, I went, you know, you start at eight in the morning, I would take notes into my respected book that whatever I did that day from the teacher, right? I would go home, I would review that information again for maybe about two hours. Say it was biostatistics is usually what is first. So I reviewed that section of the biostats uh, and from YouTube videos and from reading my, my captain book, because that's what I did, uh, and some from the first day just to make sure they had everything in there. And then after about two to three hours of reviewing everything we did that day in class, I would then do about 10 to 20 questions on biostats, right? And this is extremely important to do these questions. Um, most, I know Becker and Kaplan does give you their own cue banks. So what I did with Kaplan was I interchanged about 15 questions with Kaplan. The next day I did 15 questions at UWorld. So I interchanged Kaplan and UWorld every other day uh, and implemented them at the end of my study period each day. And I did this every single day 
except for Sundays, because I always believe in a day off, or at least a half, if you're really, you know, anxious and OCD-like. Uh, and I did it every day for the whole three months. Went home, reviewed the information, did 15, 20 questions on it. And by the end of my review course, I mean, I swear, like, I learned more in that three months, I'm gonna be honest, than I did probably a majority of my medical school years. Right, so I was just like blown away by all the information that they presented to me. Because I already studied it, but the way they gave it to me was in such a unique way that I understood it better than ever. So now here I am, right? I'm done with my 14 week course. Now what do I do? If you take my advice, you did your review course, now you're gonna do dedicated. Before you do, take an MBME. After review course, take one MBME online, doesn't matter which one it is, and just see how you do, right? A lot of people won't do that well, that's okay. You just want to give yourself kind of a scale of where you're at with which subjects, where you're at as a whole, and how far are you to taking your exam, okay? So after you take the MBME, you see where your weaknesses are, you see where you're at, if you got a 200, if you got a 220, if you got a 240, you know, wherever you're at, that'll give you kind of a time frame of when to take your exam. And as far as dedicated study time, which is my uh, next point I want to help you out with, is how long you should take to do dedicated study before your exam. And the answer, in my opinion, is about three to five months tops, okay, of dedicated study time. And during these three to five months, really all you're doing is questions, right? If you saw my other video and take my advice and did just a few questions every day on the island, now you do the rest of the questions during Kaplan, you have completed UWorld in full one time. So you have done every concept, learned all the information UWorld has given you, as well as your review program, right? So now you have your knowledge base pretty decent. So now you do questions, questions, questions. You have to be able to do random timed questions at least one to two blocks a day to try to prep yourself up to taking, you know, eight blocks timed random, like how the exam is going to be. Okay. So that's all I did. Dedicated study time. I woke up same time, seven o'clock, ate breakfast by eight o'clock. I did a block. I reviewed the block for a few hours, did another block, reviewed the block for another three to four hours. And then, you know, by that time, um, you know, it's nighttime, I exercised in between the blocks as well, uh, and then eating food and stuff, and your day is over. Repeat. I mean, this is so repetitive, it's ridiculous, but it's worth it, right? This is what we have to do in order to be a part of the best profession in the world, right? You have to make sacrifices like this. Another thing that I do recommend, once you feel slightly comfortable with your MBME score, once you're maybe 15 to 20 points off, book your date, okay? There's nothing more motivational than seeing that exact day of when you're going to take your step one exam to marking it on your calendar of when you're going to take that exam. You just jump into like freaking hyper speed mode study time. Like you just go and go and go and you get so motivated to get to that point in your life because this is what you've been working for for the past few years. Okay, so set that date. Yes, if you are not ready, you can postpone it. I really hope you don't because I know a lot of people, I have a lot of friends that postpone after postpone after postpone and now it's two or three years later and they still haven't taken their exam. So set the date and try your hardest not to postpone it. But if you're not ready, by all means, postpone it. But then you got to work even harder because the longer you postpone this exam, the more information that's gonna go out the back door, okay? There's so much stuff that we have to know. The more time, the much more uh, easier it is for that information to leave your memory bank, right? Why do I say three to four months? I did not know this when I was studying. I thought, oh, take a year, as long as you do well, right? As long as you get a 250, whatever, who cares? But I learned the hard way during my interview season. And at every interview I had, I got the same question asked. I mean, I had a few questions asked, but the same one was, why did you take, you know, so-and-so time off? What were you doing in this time? 
why did you take so long to take the exam, right? And you do not want that to be the question that determines whether you get an interview or not, right? Or maybe even the residency or not. Residency programs, you know, they uh, want people that can study for an exam in a small period of time and do well or pass, you know, or do average. Because U.S. students, they only get about a month, sometimes two if they're lucky, to study for a step one exam and get it out of the way. Some only a few weeks. So when you're taking six months, a year to prep for this exam, that is one of the red flags that you're going to get for interviews. So that's why I recommend crunching it down into that three or four, maybe five months the most of having dedicated study time. And if you are not ready by the end of that five months, that's okay. But the next thing you have to do is start electives, right? At CMU, we cannot start our course, but we can start electives. Don't prolong that leave of absence anymore. So after three to five months, if you're not ready, start an elective. Hopefully it can be one of the lighter ones, you know, you still have to go to the clinic, right? But hopefully it's one of the ones that you can have some kind of study time at least half the week and still focus on step one. Because I'm gonna say it again, I have seen this a few times, maybe more than I should, where people postpone it, start their electives, and then get caught up in clinical knowledge and CK stuff, CS, and all into their electives. And it's like, what about step one? Do not forget step one. This is the hardest exam out of all of them, right? This is probably the most important one out of all of them. So try your hardest to get it in that three to five month time frame. If you can't, start the elective, but do not lose track of step one studies and that motivation to finish that exam. Thank you everyone for watching. If you like the video, please subscribe below and stay tuned for the next part of my series.